Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second part of this video tutorial where we are going to finish up the axe. In the last video, we went over how to create a leather handle, wood texture, and so much more. In this video tutorial, we're going to be covering how to detail the axe, including giving it damage, adding our own symbols, and so much more. So let's go ahead and get started. By the way, you guys can follow along by going to Academic Phoenix Plus and downloading this axe for free. So you guys can follow along and decorate it to your heart's desire. So take a look at AcademicPhoenixPlus.com. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, great. So that's more like wood. This is leather. What about metal? How do we make something look like metal? So let's go to our sub tool and let's reveal our axe, our support system and the back of the axe. Again, hit F. This time I'm going to focus on this area. So hold on Alt and click on the axe, which will select the handle. And again, we are going to divide geometry and divide. Now I haven't saved. Maybe I should do that. What you want to do is go to tools and then go to save as. And again, I'm in assets. And this is called axe underscore version one. This will save a Z tool. So if I send this to anybody, everyone will be able to open it. So I am going to hide my super high poly handle. There we go. And I'm going to be focusing on this one. Now you'll notice that it kept, kept its beveled edges because in the model, in the 3D model, I actually added beveled edges so that when I smoothed it in ZBrush, it would actually maintain those edges. So that's something that you need to keep in mind is that I actually created the model so that it have these bevel edges. So let me show you that. So down here at the bottom here, we can actually see what's going on with the poly count. Now in geometry, you'll notice how high it is compared to the to Maya. You'll notice that we have this divide, but we also have these subdivision level. If I grab this and drag it into one, this is the original model. Right? And you can see that it's got these beveled edges. So if you go into Maya, you'll see it. And I can actually crank this up to two and then crank it up to three. So those are all my subdivisions. It's pretty nice. So again, I'm going to divide it again because right now we're at 24. And again, we're now at 95,000, which I'll keep for now. I might need to go higher. But let's make this look beaten up. So I'm going to take this, turn it off. And I really want to make it look like this is done by somebody that just kind of beats the, the ax. I don't want it fancy. I don't want to make it look like, Hey, this is made for royalty. I want this to have personality. So what I'm going to use to create that texture is start off with a trim dynamic. So up here at the top under brush, grab the trim, trim dynamic. So let me go to transform, make sure Z is on. And so whatever I do on one side, it should do it on the other. So now I'm going to go in and just kind of beat it up a little bit. And what it's doing is just going to create this interesting texture. And that's what I want. I don't want it to be a perfect ax. I want it to look like it's seen some things. I'm not sure why it's not, the symmetry is not really working, but that's okay. This doesn't take very long. It's auto saving. That's fine with me. So by adding this damage, what it's doing is that it's given it a sense of use and wear. So that means that this isn't something that you bought for the king or the queen. Um, this is something that we were that seen history and that it was built really fast. But that's a lot of fun right there. Cool. So we're getting to this really nice texture. Awesome. All right. Now that we did this, we might want to add a little bit of design to it. So what if we wanted to put a little symbol in here? Well, we can. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it. One of them is the same way we did it before, which was a standard surface. But this time we're going to import our own logo. So I'm going to go to alpha. I'm going to go to import. And in my images, I have a Celtic knot. And just like before, I'm going to do drag rectangle. And when I click and drag, you're going to see that I can create a logo. So symmetry is going to be important here because I want the same thing to look on the other side. So let's turn on symmetry. And of course I want it to rise. So hold down alt, click and drag. And you can see that it's a little pixelated because we don't have enough geometry and it's also a little soft on the sides. So I'm going to undo and let's divide again. 
Now we're getting up to, let's see how much now, 382. I'm gonna divide again just so I can get more detail. Now I'm in the 1 millionths. This is where I actually slow down. So again, let's hold down Alt, click and drag. And now we have this really nice looking logo. But the issue is the edges. You can see how soft it is. Remember that ZBrush uses a brush and it uses a focal shift. So its purpose is to make sure that the edges are soft so the transitions are easy, are smoother. But we don't want that. We want it to be nice and sharp. So to do so, we're going to turn off the focal length shift by changing it to negative 100. Now when I click and drag, and you'll notice that we're not getting the best results. And only that, if I wanted to add more details to it, it's going to be pretty challenging. So instead, what we're going to do is use a mask. To get a mask, we have to hold down control. But you'll notice that if I try to do a mask, I can actually draw on this. But how do I get a mask with this alpha? Well, hold down control, click on alpha. And here it is. Here's my cell tech knot. And I can also change this. So now when I can click and drag, you'll see the cell tech knot. Right? But it also has a focal shift. So again, if you hold down control, it's got a focal shift. Let's zero that out. Oops, that was wrong. Uh, focal shift, not the draw size. And again, control, click and drag and create your Celtic knot. And undo that so it's a little bit more in the center. If I can, I'm getting closer. I'll get it, I'll get it. Maybe a little lower, right around here. All right, awesome. So I need to reverse it, so control, click. And now what I can do is let's grab an alpha one but let's turn this back into dot and you can see that I can draw on it. Now it's pushing it back because as you can imagine, the Z is in C sub and it should be in at. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can actually go in and start bringing this up. So very gently, there's other ways you can do this, but this is a little bit more manual. It's a little bit of fun. Just kind of seeing this get uh, changed. You can go to the other side and you'll notice that it's doing the same thing. And it's nice because you can go in and kind of like clean it up and stuff like that. Cool. Shift will smooth it out a little bit. So you can kind of make it softer on the edges so it kind of sticks out a little bit less. And there's just a lot you can do with this. You can keep going or, but I just want a slight design. So now that I'm done, control, click and drag. And now we have a Celtic knot on there. All right, let's add some damage to this. It already looks like it's been, you know, built for a fight. And what if we wanted to do some scratches? Well, that's where the damn standard comes back. So I'm going to grab the damn standard and make it a little bit smaller and just kind of give it some scratches. So it's going to look like it's seen some battle. So I'm going to turn on symmetry and just make some quick scratches. If you want to, you can use freehand, which will give you a little bit of a different technique. So you just kind of go in. You may want to make a big scratch so it looks like it got hit pretty hard. You can increase the intensity a little bit so the scratch is pretty strong. But in general, I just want small scratches. So you want to go in and just make it look like it's been, you know, it's been, it's seen some things. You can, I'm changing the intensity to make sure that some of them are stronger and some of them are not as strong. And then I'm just going to go in and make a little bit of changes here. Again, you can use pinch if you want to. So click on the letter P and you can pinch some of the areas to make it look like there's less a little bit of, of a pointed end at the end of these. And there are brushes out there that you can download uh, to kind of cre create this for you. But again, I'm just trying to demonstrate to you some of the really great things that ZBrush can provide for you. So I'm just going to go in and kind of those pinches. All right. Looks like it's seen some battle. Great. Let's grab this guy right here. Again, you can hold on Alt and click on it. Um, we need to give it some geometry. I'm going to go ahead and hide that axe. Let's grab this brush. Let's grab the trim dynamic. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and let's speed it up a little bit. So again, this is a little bit more freestyle. Let me turn on symmetry and just kind of go in and just beat it up a little bit. 
Again, it's just going to make it feel that it's been built uh, for, for practical reasons. All right, cool. Now this one I'm not going to spend too much time on. I mean, I can go ahead and grab a, a damp sander just to give it like a scratch or so. Something like that. And we can also grab a standard brush and let's give it a nub. We can always grab other alphas and see if maybe that produces something better. Let me increase my intensity and just kind of create. We can use alpha 48. It's going to make it look like it's got a little bit. Let me just give the intensity a little higher. Then I'm going to grab the trim dynamic and just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Going back to the standard. Can you make it a circle? All right. And finally, the last piece. We'll do this one fast too. Again, we're going to divide. We are going to grab that trim dynamic and make that brush smaller and just kind of go in. If it's not enough geometry, which looks like it's not, well, let's go ahead and increase the division again. It's only at 48 at this time. Let's reduce that Z intensity so it's not so strong and just kind of go in and not oh, that turned off symmetry. I'm just going to go through and just kind of beat up the object a little bit. I'll turn on symmetry just so I can kind of get a little bit more inf faster information. Let's increase in intensity to another one. Oop. There you go. That looks pretty intense. All right, let's see the whole thing together. Let's go ahead and turn everything on and there you go. There's a lot of things you can do with ZBrush, but that was just an introduction to ZBrush so that you guys can kind of explore. It's pretty amazing. I'm looking forward to showing you more. So again, what we did was we exported an OBJ from Maya, brought it in into ZBrush, separated it into sub tools, and then it focused on every single piece so that we could add specific detail. The next part would be to save this, which I am right now. And I'm going to call this, since I am basically done with it, I'm going to call this Axe High Poly. And then the next thing I want to do is actually export this so that I can use it in other other things like, let's say, Substance Painter. So therefore, what I'm going to do is that over here to the right is go to Export. You can see that I have an Axe that's from Maya underscore High Poly. Save. And now I have a OBJ with the High Poly which means that now I can bring it in into Substance Painter and start baking so I can get the details. But that is going to be another tutorial. But hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. We, we went over a lot of things, but hopefully this will get you started with ZBrush so that you can start detailing your objects and getting some really nice details. As you can see, the total is about 5 million points. I'm surprised my computer is not dying. But that just shows how powerful ZBrush is. Don't forget to go to academicphoenixplus.com and take a look at free ebooks, free tutorials, free downloads, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you guys found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and share my videos with anybody that could use something like this, an introduction to ZBrush. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.